Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and welcome to another Solo Fall Baits video. So this is gonna be the very first video of the year and I decided to make it extra special. So I've never made a spy bait before and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a spy bait because I never made one before and I'm kind of curious if I can make one. And on top of that, I wanted to challenge myself even further and make this completely out of Bondo because why not? And also people have been asking me in the past if I can make lures out of Bondo. And I guess you will uh, learn the answer today. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to be so showing you how to make this kick-ass spy bait. As you might guess, making a lure out of Bondo is no easy feat and the easiest way that I thought that I would be able to make one uh, successfully is to make a mold. So for that we're going to be needing a mold master, so that's what we're going to start off with. And I'm going to be using this uh, piece of maple here, because that's actually the preferred wood that I like to use for any kind of really small detailed carving because obviously I have to do carving because you know it's me <laughs> and I can't do a lot without carving anymore or some other kind of high detail. Anyways I'm just going to be using this um, uh, cutout as the outlines and uh, I'm just going to draw it onto this piece of maple and then we're going to head out to the garage and I'm going to be cutting this out. Before heading to the bandsaw and cutting this out, I'm going to be poking a pilot hole starter with an awl. Since maple is a very hard wood to work with, having a bandsaw sure does help a lot. Any roughness left behind by the bandsaw blade was uh, taken care of with a disc sander, like always. You remember that uh, pilot hole uh, starter that I put in earlier? Well, I'm gonna be using that now to drill a hole through the piece with my drill press. I'm gonna start working on the upper profile soon. But before that, I'm going to mark the center line for this uh, particular lure. So next I'm going to start working on the upper profile and I decided not to do any guidelines for this one because I kind of already know what I want and I felt like I don't really need them at this point. In order to save some time uh, with the shaping of the lure, I decided to put the table on my uh, disc sander into 45 degrees so I can hog off some material that way. Rest of the shaping and rounding off the lure I would do with a utility knife and a piece of sandpaper, which was uh, around 80 grit. Alrighty, now that I have the lure in its final shape, I'm gonna drill out the eye sockets, which will help me align everything um, a little bit later on when I actually start carving the lure. Yep, 
if you've seen any of my other videos, you already know what's coming next. And that is I'm going to cut up this um, template and I'm going to use um, the cutout pieces to transfer uh, specific lines or shapes that I want to add on this uh, particular lure. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that next. So I've now finished uh, drawing on all of the head details that I want to carve out. And next we're going to start carving them out. So my preferred tool for this job is to use a 9mm thick hobby knife that has these uh, snap-off blades. I just love using these things and they work extremely well. And I think for the duration of all of the carving that I'm doing, I think I'm going to leave all of the clips as long as I shot them. So. Uh, you guys will be able to see much more clearly what I'm doing here without chopping them up or um, speeding things up. And I've heard that some of you actually enjoy that quite a bit, so um, enjoy.
So now that I've finished carving all of the head details, I ne still need to make uh, those knife marks disappear. And for that, I'm using this uh, handy little tool that I made specifically for stuff like this. So it's basically a sanding block or sanding stick or whatever you want to call it. It basically just has a piece of sandpaper uh, glued in the tip of it. And I believe in this one, it's uh, 220 grit. I'm going to cut up this template even further and use that as a guide to draw the ladder line into the lure. Uh, because, to be honest, my hand has always been kind of shaky and I need all the help I can get. Next I'm going to start marking where the scales will be and for that I decided to do something a little different to my normal process where I would just use a ruler to mark the distance between each scale. I figured that using a plastic strip that is uh, cut to 2 millimeters would speed up the marking and it actually did. I was able to speed through the marking in record time with great accuracy to boot. Alright, next I'm going to start doing the grid pattern for the scales. And for that I'm using this um, piece of plastic that has a cutoff V in it. I'm sure you have seen this in my previous videos if you are a regular subscriber to that channel. If you're not, then you might want to consider becoming one. Wink wink, notch notch. Uh, but yeah, anyways, this is a really good tool to uh, make sure that all of the angles uh, are correct and uniform, if that makes sense. Because the shape of the lure is pretty round, I'm going to be finishing off the grid pattern by hand so that everything will look a bit more uniform and neat. Now that the grid pattern is done, I can start carving some scales. And if you're keen-eyed, you might notice that I actually skipped a step here that I would usually do, which is uh, drawing on each individual scale. And I think this actually worked out for my uh, favor this time around, even though I kind of threw caution in the wind and uh, decided to try something completely different than new. This definitely speeds up the process by a lot.
now that I've uh, scored out all of the scales, I'm just gonna start kind of carving them out. And that is also a pretty lengthy process. And since these scales are pretty tiny, it's not really easy at all. So I kind of had to take my time with this and uh, proceed with, with uh, extreme caution. I mentioned in the beginning that this is going to be a mold master. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach all of the hardware that is going to be inside the mold. And this is kind of like a mock-up of how they would be. Now that I have all the holes uh, drilled out, I'm just going to insert the mock-up pieces of um, bent wire and glue them in with uh, super glue. All right, it's time to bust out the best thing that has ever come out of Denmark, Legos, and start making the mold. So what I have here is modeling clay and of course I'm using the Legos as a mold box. Now that I have smoothed out the modeling clay and it's nice and flat, I'm going to excavate a hole that is the size of the mold master and I'm just going to place my mold master halfway into that hole and that will be my first layer of uh, the mold because obviously this is going to be a two-piece mold. Once the mold master was secured into the mold clay, I started filling up the exposed areas and making the parting line as flat as I possibly could. Now 
At this point, when everything was pretty much already done and ready to go, I decided, you know what, I think I'm going to use this for something else too, other than this particular project. And I want to add a pouring hole into it as well. So that's what I did next. Before pouring the silicone, I'm going to use a back end of a pen to uh, basically make a bunch of holes uh, or divots into the mold clay. And that will help me later on when I close the mold and it will keep it from moving around too much or at all, hopefully, which will then uh, give me a nice and even casting. All right, it's time to start pouring the mold silicone and the mold silicone that I usually always end up using is uh, mold max 30 I've used it for several years now and I've never had any problems with it it's really durable and um, yeah I just like it a lot one really big uh, convenient thing about mold max 30 in particular is that it's not one of those weird ratios where you have to calculate a lot and uh, I'm not very good at math so it's really easy just let's say you pour a hundred grams like I'm doing right now you only need uh, 10 grams of accelerant to uh, make sure that it cures later on which is really convenient for a math retard like me When I had measured out the uh, correct ratio of silicone and accelerant, it's just a matter of giving it a good stir and making sure that you don't have any streaks or anything like that. So basically what you're looking for here is a even color. If you are a poor YouTuber like me who doesn't have money to buy a vacuum chamber to get rid of the bubbles in the silicone, you can just do this. So you can pour a thin layer of uh, silicone on top of your mold master, wait around maybe 10 minutes, and after that time has elapsed, all of the bubbles have burst and you will have kind of a protective skin of silicone on top of your mold master and you will get perfect castings every time. All right, next we're going to do a little bit of recycling, which means I'm going to be adding these pieces of old molds that I've grounded up into smaller pieces with a meat grinder. And I'm just going to add that into the mold silicone, adding more volume. Once I've mixed the old mold silicone with the new, I'm just going to dump that into the mold and that will make our first half of the mold. And as a side note, I think a good mix ratio between the two is probably around 50-50. Here I went a little bit over that, but it did end up working pretty well. But if you want to be on the safe side, 50-50 is a good way to go. Once I've taken out the mold clay, I'm just going to uh, reinforce or add more material into these uh, spout areas that need to be closed in order for them to work well. Also, uh, this is the time when I clean the mold thoroughly. All right, so now that I've cleaned up the uh, mold surfaces thoroughly, I'm just going to mess everything up again and use this Vaseline to smear it all over the place to act as my release agent. Because of course, as you know, silicone wants to stick to anything that's silicone. So we definitely don't want that to happen. And this is a very economical and pretty efficient way to go about this as well. And now that I have added the uh, release agent, I'm just going to basically do exactly the same thing I did on the first side and just uh, dump this uh, horrible looking mess into the mold. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, so now that the mold is done, I can start making the lure itself. And in the beginning, uh, I had this idea of making a lure out of cement. And I did do several experiments on different molds before, and they worked. But for some unexplainable reason, I couldn't get it to work in this mold. What I'm thinking is maybe the lure itself is too thin, and that results in the cement cracking, which is very annoying. But then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try something else and I'm gonna use Bondo instead. Similarly to the failed cement experiment, I decided to start with thin layers first, making sure that there would be no air bubbles and hopefully no cracking. While I was adding the Bondo in the mold, I realized, you know what, I don't think this method is gonna work too well getting all the details. So let me just go there with my finger and just smear it around. And uh, that actually ended up working pretty well. In the end, I ended up adding three layers of Bondo before stopping roughly three millimeters from the rim of the mold, which was plenty enough space to add weight and the internal Y harness before going slightly over that rim and squishing the two halves together. Uh, thus making one solid casting. A bit crude, I admit, but it did work. After waiting roughly 30 minutes for the Bondo to cure completely, I pulled the mold apart and I have pretty much a perfect casting with a little bit of flashing, which was kind of uh, to be expected. After removing the flashing uh, from the casting, I then primed the lure and now it's time to paint it. And this time around I decided to make something completely different that I usually do, which is fairly often very natural colors. And this is not going to be natural in the slightest. I'm calling this one Unicorn Vomit. And I'm going to start with this Vallejo Moon Yellow, which is a really bright uh, type of yellow, which will work really well with uh, what I have in mind. So the next step is to add no color at all. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm going to spray this metallic varnish on top of the yellow that I just shot, and that will uh, act as kind of like a protective layer for what I have in mind next. And now I'm going to use a wash technique, meaning I will shoot this cockpit green into the selected area that I want to be highlighted. And while the paint is still wet, I'm going to wipe it off with a damp paper towel, leaving the paint I just shot in the carved grooves. Once the green highlights were done, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with this red paint, and I'm gonna focus on the belly of the bait. Orange is a pretty good shock color, so I decided that I wanted to add some of that in the belly as well. Next I'm going to shoot a color that I don't get to use that often, which is a shame because this is freaking beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
at this point I was looking at the lure and I was like, hmm, I think I need something on the cheeks. Maybe green, maybe blue. But then I was like, hmm, I think purple will look actually really nice here. So that's what I went with. And since I still had the magenta in the gun, I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna use that for the fins as well. Once the fin was done, I was like, hmm, I think I still need a little bit more purple in the lure as well, so might as well make a lateral line too. I still wanted to add a dot and I was thinking of actually using black, but then I was like, mm, no, let's just use another shade of purple. So now everything is pretty much finished and I just need to add the eyes and I'm gonna glue them in with 5 minute epoxy. And now there is only one thing to do before I can actually start putting this thing together and adding the hardware and that is to clear coat the whole door. And I'm using true coat epoxy again. And I end up using uh, or putting on uh, four layers in total. Usually I would go with two but uh, I had some weird uh, contamination on the surface so I needed to kind of uh, smooth everything out so that it would look a little bit more presentable. It has been several days since I put on the epoxy and now it's time to put on the hardware. Mainly these beads uh, that I got from Amazon and the metal props that I got from Barlow's. Once I got the hardware in, I'm now going to awkwardly make loops for the line tie and for the back hook hanger. Now that I have the first loop done, I'm just going to cut off the tag end and I'm going to move on to the back end of the lure and do exactly the same thing. Now I'm just going to add some hooks uh, that I selected. These are Kamakatsu's, uh, I think, number twos, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're number twos. Anyways, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but yeah, uh, next we're going to head out to the bathtub and check out the amazing action that these uh, props are going to make. And here you can see the absolutely amazing churning action of those blades. Amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can even see it, but uh, yeah, they are spinning. Don't worry about it. Um, also, surprisingly, this has kind of a side-to-side -side, uh, swimming action, kind of a shimmy when you pull it, which was something I wasn't expecting it uh, to have, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but I think... If I would ever make these again, I think I would put a little bit more weight on the front end of the lure. Right now, I feel like it's a little bit too tail heavy, but you know, there's always next time. 
But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And also, you can support me on Patreon if you want. There you will have um, behind-the-scenes stuff. And also, I will post uh, future videos there uh, in advance. So you will be able to watch them before anyone else. And also, I have that new web shop open as well. Hint, hint. I do have some new stuff in there at the moment. Uh, some glide baits which have a amazing action. I'm not just telling you uh, because I made them, but they absolutely have a fantastic action and I'm really proud of those. Anyways, I will see you guys on the next video. I already have a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna make.